Kaylee, thank you much. New at 6 in Sacramento, a bill focusing on California clergy now making its way through the state capitol. Senate Bill 360 would require Catholic priests to report other priests or co workers who have admitted to abusing or neglecting a child, even if the abuser says it in the confessional. CBS 47's Pedro Quintana joins us live in the studio with more on this one. Pedro. Well, can other states like Texas have adopted similar bills? Now, clergy members are already mandated to report child abuse, but this bill will go an extra step and require those priests to report on their colleagues. The state of California is trying to change the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Senate Bill 360 would require priests to report other priests to police if they have confessed of abusing a child during a sacred confession. We spoke to some church members who are uneasy about the precedent set by the legislation. The California Catholic Conference sent us a statement that reads in part, We are disappointed that the California State Senate today passed Senate Bill 360. It will help no one, yet has the potential to hurt everyone. This recent bill comes as accused Valley Monsignor Craig Harrison faces allegations of sexual misconduct. His attorney, Kyle Humphrey, says his client is eager to clear his name. I think this was really his first opportunity to talk about the false accusers. Harrison says that he has been waiting for over four weeks to hear from the Catholic Diocese of Fresno about the allegations and share his side to the story. He writes, quote, it is with deep sadness that I've come to the realization that this is a battle that I am left to fight without support from the diocese. He goes on to say that the diocese have not invited him to respond or provide evidence to these allegations. This is, this process is such a biased witch hunt. I, I don't even know what else to call it. We reached out to the Catholic Diocese of Fresno for comment, but our requests were not answered. And SB 360 will not head to the state assembly for a vote. It's unclear if Governor, Governor Gavin Newsom will sign this bill into law. In the studio, Pedro Quintana, CBS 47 Eyewitness News. One of the things that faithful Catholics are at least a little familiar with are the various stories about the coming persecution of the church in the end of days. Much of Catholic and Protestant literature depicts that persecution, often in ways that are frankly so badly written that they are pretty much unconsumable. I really hate to be the one to say this, but most Christian movies are just awful. And that's fine, <clears throat> to be sure. We're not going to convince anyone with a movie that isn't subtle about the need to believe in Christ and his church. We know that, but that doesn't mean those films and books need to be poorly written or poorly made. One thing these predictions of the end of days all have in common is that the government and society will turn against the church that there will be a massive persecution that drives the faithful underground, and that public worship will be outlawed. Priests and faithful will be martyred, public sin will be enshrined in law, and the violence against the faith will be so bad that it'd make Diocletian blush. And perhaps someday, all that will come true. But for my money, those theories are wrong in one way. They did not predict that the church would provide the world with what looks like a legitimate excuse to persecute the faith which is now what is playing out before our eyes in slow motion, but also in increasingly overt ways. Aside from the violence of the Mohammedans in Asia, the Middle East, Africa, Europe, and now Canada, the persecution seems to be the result of modernism and the sexual degeneracy and perversion that accompanies it. Let's have a look at what I mean. The most recent example of this persecution comes from the great, formerly great state of California, a place that, like I said, used to be great and strongly Catholic. Perhaps no place in the U.S. has more places named after the saints than California. This constant reminder of the faith must weigh heavy on the hearts and consciences of the politicians in the party of Moloch, as they decided to combat a problem that doesn't actually exist. Inspired by the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report and the stories of Ted McCarrick and other monsters molesting teenagers in the confession, California has decided to change existing law to annihilate the seal of confession. I say that they are combating a non-existent problem because what they're doing won't address the McCarrick abuse problem in the slightest. According to existing state law, the First Amendment protections for the seal of confession are respected. Under the current law that the Moloch worshippers will absolutely change, nothing said in the confessional under the auspices of a confession can be coerced by the courts or police. The law does require members of the clergy, including rabbis, priests, or ministers, to report suspected sexual abuse of minors to authorities, except, again, for thanks confessed under the seal of confession or a similar situation for Protestants and Jews. 
this law had nothing to do with McCarrick's crimes of molesting young adults in the confessional, nor the cases in Pennsylvania where similar things happened. The church would never recognize a sealed confession being valid in those situations. Try telling that to the party of Moloch in California and around the country, where the new law will be copied if the courts don't stop it. Speaking of the new law, here's what changes will be coming when the Moloch worshiper in chief in California signs it into law. The bill proposed by State Senator Jerry Hill, Moloch party member from San Francisco, of course, would narrow that exemption for church employees, including priests who admit to or suggest sexual abuse sins during confession. Senator Hill claims that the existing law has been used to shield abusers. The thing about this is this, no abuser is going to confession, and confessing this sin to anyone except another priest or bishop who is going to lie to protect him. That is, this would only be confessed to a member of the Lavender Mafia. Why? Because a decent priest has the ability to tell any sinner in the confessional that they will not absolve them of their sin until they turn themselves in for their crimes. That can and has happened. Though the cases I've been told of anecdotally by members of the clergy have to do with different crimes committed by the laity, including homicide and major theft cases. On Friday, May 25th, the State Senate of California passed the bill in question on a vote of 30 to 2, to give you an idea of how easily this will likely pass in the State Assembly, and how the party of usury and war also joined the party of Moloch in voting for it. The State Assembly is California's version of the House of Representatives. Archbishop Gomez of Los Angeles had this to say on the matter. Quote, I am deeply disappointed with today's Senate vote on SB 360. I can continue to believe we can strengthen mandated reporting laws to protect children's safety, while at the same time preserving the sanctity of penitential com communications. End quote. Bill Donahoe, president of the New York-based Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights, called this a frontal assault on religious freedom, which is accurate. He went as far to say, and I quote, No priest is going to respect it and violate the sanctity of the confessional. Moreover, Catholics are not required to respect unjust laws, and this is a clear example of such a law. End quote. Now, I'm going to disagree with him on one issue. Cowardice runs rampant among the clergy today. People think that the church is full of bad, corrupt priests. In truth, many priests are too afraid to speak the truth, and have been cowed into silence by the Susans of the parish council in their parish, their bad bishops, or their bad fellow priests, or all three of those things. Will a priest suffering from the malady of cowardice be willing to accept prison time for not violating the seal of confession? I have my doubts, at least in some cases. Church law automatically excommunicates a priest who violates the seal of confession. If a priest doesn't take his office seriously, then he may violate the seal, which would of course end his priesthood, and we definitely suffer because of priests who don't take their offices really all that seriously. There is a rather simple solution to this problem. If the otherwise useless U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops challenges this law in the courts as soon as it's signed into law, it'll almost certainly get overturned by the courts, at the very least by the U.S. Supreme Court if it chooses to hear the case. If the U.S. CCB did take that action, I'd at least temporarily stop calling them useless because they'd be doing their jobs protecting the sacrament of confession. I mean, that's their job, right? The fact of the matter is this. Many states have tried, many times, to pass the laws like this over the years, all in a response to the 2002 abuse crisis and the total non-response by the bishops of that time with their Dallas Charter that was coordinated by Ted McCarrick and Donna Wuerl. And it, all that did was protect the bishops, because, like I said, led by Donald Wuerl and Ted McCarrick. But what stopped the states before this was a recognition that no matter what they did, these laws would not protect a single child, nor would it work without violating religious freedom, as protected by the First Amendment and by the constitutions of virtually every state in the United States. The difference now is that we live in unreasonable times, where our lawmakers are driven by emotions and not by their mental faculties. This is probably due to our age being one where the political system not only promotes sin, but protects it, enshrines it into law, and gives it constitutional protection. Sin clouds the mind, and reduces our ability to see the truth, even when it should be obvious. Look, I'm no saint, but even I can see that these laws have no hope of standing up before the courts. If the USCCB chooses to fight them starting when they're signed into law, then they'll be overturned relatively quickly. If not, then the laws will sit on the books until a priest or a group of laity challenges them when the state tries to enforce that law, which may take a very long time to happen. But I'm going to end this on a note of warning. 
It comes from the mouth of one of the state senators who spoke in favor of this bill, State Senator Hannah Beth Jackson of the party of Moloch. Quote, the state, the people, do have the right to limit certain practices that are believed to be inappropriate and immoral. We are a society. We are governed by laws. We are governed by what we believe to be morally correct and what is in the best interest of our communities and society. And I would submit having, accepting, condoning, allowing this kind of behavior to continue on a claim of religious freedom is anathema to everything we hold dear. End quote. Think about that for a moment. This problem she is citing is non-existent. The cases of the sealed confession being abused by this priests are the kinds that wouldn't stand up before an ecclesiastical tribunal in the first place. The problem is that the church hasn't taken the problem of morally bankrupt priests seriously, because many of the most illustrious bishops in the country, men like Bernadine, Mahoney, Spellman, and others over the years, recruited men with deviant sexual proclivities into the priesthood on purpose, with the goal of transforming the church from within. That is a fact, and that is why their spiritual children, today's crop of corrupt bishops, have not had these men stripped of their offices and thrown into a dungeon in Vatican City to rot. Instead, they send good, faithful priests like Father Kalchik out of Chicago to St. Luke's because he was too traditional. But their influence is waning, and the time is drawing short. I remain convinced that a RICO investigation is on the horizon, and when that hits, it's going to be a very bad day for the modernist bishops in the church in America and in Rome. Thank you for listening and for your support. If you'd like to support my work, there are options in the description of this video. Please pray for the liberation of the church from the people running it into the ground. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.